welcome to Watchers and People episode 2, whoever is watching as usual. And today we have Woody, right? Instagram yes. tag and everything right here. Um, very interesting day today to talk about um, Woody's journeys and watches and um, basically why he collect watches, his background and everything. Mm. So yeah, over to you. Maybe just talk about uh, who are you and what do you do and when you start collecting watches. Sure. Yeah. So my name is Woody. Um, I'm a management consultant by day, watch enthusiast by night. <laughs> <laughs> or rather the whole day, yeah. when I think about it. Uh, my first watch, was a mechanical watch, was actually a ball. And it was a, a very sentimental watch because it was something that my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, we bought, she bought, chipped half 50% of that. Oh. Huh? But the, the thing that got me into it was just turning that watch around. It had a Sapphire case back. It's just at the point in time, I had no idea what I was looking at. It was just really <laughs> cool to see something <laughs> taking away the escapement, taking away, I didn't even know what the name was yeah. at the time. And it was like, I would just look at that and it's like, this is nice you know mm. and but this was back in 2011 uh, mm. when i first started and back then even an expense of that amount was to mm. me was a one-off yeah. and I, I never thought of it again mm-hmm. fast forward a year plus later um, i start everything that i get into i read a lot about it mm. and i've always gravitated to things which have a mix of art and technology so i'm really into photography as well so i started doing photography many many years back Mm -hmm. Uh, digital photography i never got really got into the film thing tried it never quite worked but the digital one really worked for me so did a bit of photography of the watches as well and then but never really had the budget to play with this sort of things right but continued reading about it so there's stuff like uh, the watch not on askmen.com you know it's really hilarious guy um, so got more familiar and then fast forward to about 20 uh, this was 2017 I was posted as an into an international post as an expatriate so the pay was a little bit better at the time and I figured it was a good moment um, so I decided now's the time to go get something right so mm-hmm. I asked a few people who knew watches and everybody pointed me towards the Speedmaster <laughs> <laughs> so I thought about it and if I'm being absolutely honest, the Moonwatch Professional wasn't the Speedmaster I was looking at at the time. <clears throat> I was actually looking at the <coughs> first Omega in space. Right. Mm. Okay. <coughs> it actually looked a lot better on my wrist, but then when I asked the mavens of the day, mm-hmm. they told me, you know, <laughs> go with the safer choice. Mm. And so I ordered it. it was, I ordered it from in Malaysia, but I was actually abroad at the time. So I actually mm-hmm. made the trip back um, to collect the watch. It was quite a moment, went back. Uh, and that began the slippery slope. <laughs> Did you get it from a boutique or? I got it from a dealer, a multi-brand dealer. Okay, right. uh, so the price was pretty good uh, at that point in time. And a good friend of mine set me up. And so it's bought brand new, the whole big box thing, right? It's yeah. the most ridiculous box anyone yeah, ever yeah. put together. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a new version. Wait. Same as yours, right? Yeah, same one. Yeah. So that was what? 2017? 2017. 2017, yeah. 2017. Oh, so you only started 2017. Uh, yeah. So the ball was 2010. And then 2017 was when you... Yeah, I, I, I bought slope. another ball after that. Uh, that was in 2013 that I bought another one. But, but you didn't know about watches yet at the time. I didn't go deep into mm, it so okay. much yet. Because, you see, the, the jump from a 3,000 ringgit to yeah. a 15,000 yeah. and above, right? It's a huge jump yeah. at that point in time. So I, I loved what, looking at it. Never just crossed my mind to buy anything. So I started to read mm. even back then already. Mm. Um, so got the G-Shocks, you know, and all that. <laughs> right. then got into all of that. Yeah, yeah. Then went to the Speedmaster. Now, the Speedmaster was the one that started the slippery slope because now everything opens up, right? You read into the, the history, you, you try and find out what are the similar watches of the cache. Yeah. And the one that really spoke to me was the El Primero. Uh. <laughs> so I looked at all the watches and I think back then the Rolex craze hadn't really hit at full force yet because this was 2017, 2018. It was just about the right, point yeah. it was going to hit, right? They even give discounts at the time. Yeah, and I didn't think of Rolexes at that point in time because for me, one of the first watches I bought for myself when I was started working was just this fashion watch Esprit, right? Which was just a tree sub dial. It wasn't even a chronograph. It was like probably calendar or something like that. Yeah. But I like the fact that there was more things going on in the dark, mm-hmm. right? So the Speedmaster spoke to me, on mm-hmm. of everyone else. Yeah. And then when I saw the El Primero, I'm like, wait, this is something different. Mm-hmm. And then because you start reading to the history and all that, like mm-hmm. first so parent integrated uh, chronograph, right? 
and I was like, okay. So I paced myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came back from my posting, which was about a year and a half, um, I decided, and at that point in time, I had a pretty good uh, bump in my career as well. So it's like, okay, again, any <laughs> any <laughs> is <laughs> so great, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, I went to see the watch. Uh, they had, I think, uh, they they had the watch at that point in time. I saw it in the shop. I didn't make a decision because again, this is markedly higher than this at yeah. that point in time, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Um, and walked away. But you know, once it's in your head, it's yeah. in your head, yeah. right? There's, there's no way to, to walk was, away. Already, was, right? was there a motivation why you wanted to get another chronograph? And you know, normally people try to think about you know yeah. diversifying a bit, right? But so, you just love the sub dials, is I actually, if you told me. Um, if I had to pick one complication that I like above all else, it is the chronograph. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's something I've always gravitated to. Mm -hmm. And I just like the fact that this one had a history a bit more obscure, a bit more... People don't really talk about it as much except if you're in the mm -hmm. know of it, right? So fast fast forward, got a good deal out of it, told the salesperson, you give me this price, I will pay the deposit, I'll take it uh, the next time I, I come in, mm -hmm. right? So that was the story, the El Primero. But so so you wanted El Primero because of the history? history of it or because you just love the dial? I, I loved everything about it because okay. it was the fact that there was a history to it. The dial was genuinely unique. Mm -hmm. um, you now have a technological movement that's like uh, 10 beats a second, right? Mm -hmm. It's the exact stuff. same movement they used in 1969. Yes, yes, yes. And right. it was very faithful as well. So the thing that the Speedmaster also got me into mm -hmm. is the fact that if the closer it is to the original, mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. the, more, the more I liked that idea yeah. as well. So I uh, didn't hesitate too much on that but from then on it was a very slippery <laughs> very, even slippery, slippery, more, slippery more slippery than when the Speedmaster came into place because the first one was the, always the hardest right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly okay. and then when you get to the second one and after that it just cascaded like nobody's <laughs> business so this was that came in 2018 so it's one year later right uh -huh. so, so before we go into that so do you use your chronograph for everyday life once in a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter is, it's cool to have, yeah, but right. I actually don't time things very much. I right. just like the fact that it's there, mm -hmm. um, which is a strange thing to say, but I just genuinely like the fact that yeah. you can do that. And of course, the, the great thing about the El Primero in this particular model is the case back as well. It's oh, yeah, completely it's open, right. uh, which I didn't get with the Speedy because I was advised at the time that you know you get the most faithful one, right? Of yeah. course, so, yeah, of course. So, uh, <laughs> Of yeah. course, much later I saw the eighteen sixty three, and I'm like, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then came the El Primero. Mm -hmm. the The next one didn't take very long after. <laughs> I think it was it was six months plus later only, and I was made partner at that point in time. And of oh, course, nice. another another reason to celebrate, right? So. My wife and I went to have a look, and my wife is a very good eye. I, I, I give her credit for it. So she told me, and I got her to watch this as well. That's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I showed her the reversal once, and she said, That looks very good on you. And I'm like, Really? You, know, it's a you mean at a, at a boutique, is it? You went yeah. and put I, it I, on the wrist? Whenever I, I, I try something, I'll be very transparent about it. I think yeah. I want to show it to her. Oh, okay. So she said, Actually, it looks really good on you. And I'm like, Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yes. No. I hesitated, you know, and, and then it's like, but you know, when you start getting into this watch hobby, and I was traveling a lot at that point in time, this is pre-COVID, right? Mm. So, every time you're in the airport, go yeah, to the shops, yeah. 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 yeah, you know, you, you've got time between yeah. your check-in and your boarding, you go and have a look. So, and KLIA has got reversals there as well. So, mm -hmm. tried it, I remember like coming back from a business trip, and I'm like, okay, let me take another shot. I show it to her again. Yes, it looks really good. Cool. <laughs> so, <I'm> like, <laughs> So I brought her one day, I think towards the end of the year, I brought her to with me, put it on the wrist in front and I said, no doubt that's the one that's supposed to be on your wrist already. <laughs> so I took a leap of faith because I was like, I wasn't fully convinced at that time, but I have to trust the person I married. <laughs> so that it looks good, right? Uh, so I got that. And truth be told, it has grown a lot on me and because I'm very often wearing formal attire as well. Mm. So that's uh, yeah. that helps a fair bit. Uh, the next ones after that were me actually actively looking already. So <coughs> yeah. now that I've got all of this, right, you go like, okay, what's the next what's itch? The next? What's yeah. the next itch, right? Yeah. This was terrible, you know? Yeah. And 
And because I started the trend, I, I genuinely gravitate away from hyped watches. I just mm. don't like the hype. And I think that was when I started to realize the craziness mm. of the, the Rolex, Rolex market yeah. already. And I think that was all thanks to Oral Bags uh, for all, all these different offices <laughs> and uh, uh, Paul Newman, uh, Daytoners, right? So that became off, just didn't gravitate to that anymore. So right. I started to look at other stuff. Mm. And then it dawned on me that. Uh, Back in 2015, I had already seen a German consultant I was working with, right? And mm. he wore this very unique watch. And I remember it's like, I actually know what watch that is. That's actually a Tangente. Uh, it was Tangente. Right. And I was like, oh. man, I really want to get a watch like that. But as luck should have it, you don't have it in Malaysia, right? Mm. There's, no, right. Yeah. there's no way to get it. And um, my wife was aching me on. So, you know, when we planned the next family trip, it was like, where do we go, right? And part of the criteria was where I could find normals as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, Germany? No. So, strangely enough, I went to Germany after I bought the normals. So, um, this was in Hong Kong. It was a just short family trip. Mm. Uh, so, we went over there and called them up before I even booked the flight. <laughs> nice. uh, priorities, do you, right? do you ha- Yeah, priorities all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you mean. <laughs> well, I'm in good company then. <laughs> Depends who you ask. La. Yeah, so I made the queries. They did it. They said they had it in stock. So, okay, you know. If it works, it works. I'll go there and have a look. Because it's the first time, right? You don't mm. buy sight unseen. Yep. Mm. Yeah. You try not to. Yeah. Um, went there, saw the watch, and I was like, yeah, my, my wife being the person that she is, and I love her for it, but she just loves poisoning me. It's like, you're already here. You made the trip, right? Are you going to... Is this like a one-of-a-kind one? Yeah, usually you get to say, it's like, yeah. how many wash do you need? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 correct, yeah. correct. First so, time I'm hearing a wife that's... Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm thankful for that, I guess. Mm. Uh, although there are limits that put on me now, for good reason. Yeah. Uh, or, so, or is it because the fact that, you know, maybe your wrist and her wrist is like quite same size? Oh, actually, so she could wear a lot. That's true. <laughs> she liked the fact that she could wear this one yeah, too. Yeah, this this yeah. one had a, a seal of approval. Yeah. Uh, so that was the next one. And um, So how do you gravitate towards the metro? So I like the... So when I started looking into history and, you know, looking into the the lineage of the watches, right? What I try and look for is something that's special to that brand as well. Mm. So, mm. like the Speedmaster being the Speedmaster, El Primero being the El mm. Primero, Reverso, so almost like the DNA of uh, GLC. Yeah, yeah. The icon for, yeah, the each, icon for each brand. Yeah. And then when I went to Normos, I know the Tangente was the one that's the icon. Mm. So I did like the 35, but I also like it when there's an innovation involved. Mm. So when I read that it was this one that they started their in-house capability, it's a little bit like them landing on their on right. the moon, right? Yeah. And they managed to do it. I was like, let me look at the watch from before going there. Right? It's like I actually like the quirkiness of it. You mm. know, I like the fact that it's not so standard and looking. I've always gravitated to interesting now. So that green, that little pop of mint green, mm. um, made the huge difference to me compared to any other other normal pieces. So that was the one I was only interested in. I was actually also I really liked the Zurich World Timer as well, but. Uh. Being a blessed and cursed with a very small wrist, uh, blessed because it means my choices are limited. Yeah. Uh, cursed also because my choices are limited. <laughs> uh, so this one was one of the few that I knew I could pull off. So I, yeah. I got. And yeah, the, this green one is like a power reserve, right? Yes, yeah. it is. It's, uh, it's and it, a, it, 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 it moves when, yes. you, when you wind it. Yes, it does. So it, super it, cool. It, it, I tried uh, it on it this. It rotates though. and it's a bit like a fuel gauge. So but it's fully, but it's fully worn now, so it could yeah. rotate for So you. once you the red disappears, it's fully worn. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Once Very the red cool. disappears, it's fully worn. Kind of a little bit like the uh, the Grand Seiko, but yeah. in a different way. Correct. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that was the next one. The Grand Seiko. Oh, okay. Next. Uh, <laughs> Grand Seiko was in two thousand nineteen. So, so you see, as you can see, it's very so, close. So why snowflake? Again, same idea, right? Mm. Your wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first thing that comes to your mind for each brand, is it? Right. The first thing that comes to my mind for each brand, right? Yeah. What, what really makes it special for them? Mm. So, no, I, I love the brand Grand Seiko, but for me, if it's a Grand Seiko, it has to be what they are best known for. So they've done great uh, high beat movements and automatic mm. movements, but the spring drive is yeah. truly special. You know, it's yep. like... Yeah. I remember when I first got the ball watch, people said mechanical watches sweep. Mm. But then when you look at a <laughs> spring dry sweep, uh-huh. that's so different. That's that's truly a sweep, yeah. right? Mm. And I like the fact that, you know, it's a company that for all intents and purposes people don't really like the idea that it's a, a bit of a quartz mm. um, mechanism yeah, in there as yeah. well, the regulator, right? But 
I like that they bothered to try something as mad as that. Yeah. You know, it's like, who else would think of something like that? So that was a watch that to me, I knew it was a borderline case about whether I could pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I tried to look for it in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that, you know, it's a company that for all intents and purposes, people don't really like the idea that it's a, a bit of a quartz mm. um, mechanism yeah, in there as yeah. well, the regulator, right? But I like that they bothered to try something as mad as that. Yeah. You know, it's like, who else would think of something like that? So that was a watch that to me, I knew it was a borderline case about whether I could pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I tried to look for it in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. They had no stock at the time. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be in Europe because I was attending a close friend's wedding. and went to the London boutique and I saw it there <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh crap you know walk away love it first time <laughs> walk away you know you see it it's like oh damn let me guess your wife convinced you again no <laughs> <laughs> she knew I was going to do it but she was already like really <laughs> really now <laughs> I think at that point in time yeah. I think she knew she couldn't stop me <laughs> so I gave in uh, uh, I bought it there uh, of course bought it from the Grand Shaco Boutique itself and mm. whole story long story short I probably paid too much for it also because <laughs> there's a VAT charge and I wasn't able to claim everything back and only to come back to Malaysia and realise they were restocking it and it was everywhere oh. and, then, and it's like a discount as well I'm like ah oh, damn it but I still love the watch yeah. um, uh, and after, after that I basically the, the bricks were put on already so it's mm. like okay that's I think there's only I've only one wrist that I wear my watches on I don't like the idea of double wristing yeah, hard wears it too <laughs> yeah, but it takes a certain a man of a certain stature <laughs> I don't have it so Han, Han I, I give my answer to you <laughs> so uh, slowed down a little bit but then uh, I got really into watches as you can tell right I've, yeah. I've covered the, the gamut of all of this and everyone would tell me my friends who are in watches to also joke at me it's like the only thing you're missing is a Rolex and I'm like stop it <laughs> um, but because I always gravitated to those that were a bit more understated so the line of work that I try and do also I don't try to be too flashy with wherever I am right so if you know you know mm. if you don't probably no one cares yeah. Yeah. so I'm quite careful with what I put on even when I'm meeting clients, meeting counterparts and all that. So mm. that allows me some rotation, some use case mm. yeah. and all that. But I've genuinely loved the underdog story. So I've always gravitated to brands like that. Um, and in many ways, aside from the Omega and now the Grand Seiko, all of them actually have a bit of that in them. Mm. Uh, Zenith is very much underrated oh, for, yeah, for most parts. Yeah. Yomomos is really only known among watch enthusiast circles. Grand Seiko, before they got known also, yeah. Well, especially before they made it the Grand Seiko brand, yeah, right? Yeah. Seiko logo. Yeah, the Seiko yeah. logo, right? Um, I, I just like that idea, you know, mm. that you appreciate something that those who know, know, mm. but yeah. those who don't, maybe... Right. Sort of like a secret club. Yeah. <laughs> How about your reversal? Did, did, did a lot of people recognize? Actually, no. Not really. No, not really. Not really. Not not really. Not really. Not really. It's actually. pure class. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's also because we are in the know, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of it. That's one of those watches that when you know, you know. It's mm. like, mm. wow, you know, it's like that person is carrying that out. And yeah. I've genuinely only seen one other person in all my interactions wearing one like that as well. Mm. It's only very recent mm. that I've seen it. I think it's it really takes a different level of enthusiasm to actually have that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's true. It's the, true. the equivalent of a mainstream one is a Cartier. The yes, tank. yes, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, That's yeah. the mainstream one for yeah. the equivalent of that. True, yeah. true. Mm. Yeah. All right, so the underdog story just went much further. So um, as Rene, I've spoken to him quite a few, a bit. Um, he has sometimes calls me the anti-Rolex guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. I can go into a long rant about it, uh, <laughs> nice. but don't, don't worry, um, to all you Rolex fans out there, I objectively think the watches are great. Mm -hmm. I objectively think they're well designed, they're <laughs> yeah. durable. Um, you can't go wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I would recommend it to anybody who just wants one watch. No, cannot go wrong if you can yeah. get it at retail. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you can get it. At retail. <laughs> that's that's well, what, we, what we covered as well in past few episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Our rant about Rolex's AD, but let's not get, <laughs> yeah, let's not get into it. <laughs> so, reason I talked about uh, the underdog story is now it's just a bit of two extremes, right? So you've got a target where you don't really like what's going on mm. that side. And yet there's this other whole world, right, of micro brands now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I was, I like the fact that there's this bunch of guys who put in a lot of effort and are not homage watches. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I don't mm. like it when they're trying to copy something outright. But if mm. they put a bit of effort into it and 
then you can tell also the founder has got a bit of passion about why they design it that way they try and be creative so I got and sucked into the whole micro uh, mm. space as well right so the very first one that uh, I got was actually the uh, Baltic Aquascaf oh that was mm. a very nice watch yeah uh, I like the fact that it had a bit of Panerai a little bit of uh, mm. uh, Blancpain a little bit of even the case is actually an old case of a Rolex Tudor. You know, it's basically mm. that sort of shape. Uh, so they blended everything really well. That it had a bit of uniqueness, as was a sandwich dial and all that. So that worked for me. Mm. Uh, very quickly after uh, came the Farrer. The Farrer was a love at first sight. I don't have it here. Um, it's the old timer, the blue one. The Farrer is a UK brand, right? It's a UK brand, and and they really good with bold colors. Mm, and, yeah, and so. I, like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit of a sucker for, for colourful dolls, you know, something a bit pot like you can see, like everything must have a bit of something. So mm-hmm. I know people get upset with uh, the snowflake ha- uh, the snowflake having the um, power reserve. Right? Power reserve, right? I have no problem with it because it's not that's power the that rainbow they don't have. No, that's on the case. Yeah. That's on the case. Yeah. I have a problem with that. <laughs> and as I mentioned, I gravitate to a understated, you know, you know, right? That one is just <laughs> outright loud. It's like, look at me. I have this on wrong like <laughs> I mean, you'll be, you'll be standing out more than Thanos. Right? Oh yeah, actually you're right. <laughs> with a gauntlet. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it takes like an Adam Levine kind of character. Yeah, to yeah, 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 right. Right. yeah, so no, no, no to that. Um, so got into micro bands. I like the fact that Ferrari stood for the color. And the first time I saw oh, it's yeah. Instagram, right? Dangerous place. So yeah. sight unseen. Looked at the watch. I'm like, love the idea. Love the execution. I didn't have a gold timer in my collection. Mm. Got that. Um, was actually number seven. So that was yeah. how how yeah. quick wow. uh, mm. for that year. But it was a less popular one. The more popular one was actually the one that loom the whole loom down. That was mm. actually the more popular one. I think that was covered by a few of the bloggers as well. Um, and the last one that came in was actually the last micro brand that came in was recent but before that what started is, I mean I still keep looking right you still keep reading and uh, the, this gentleman around me know uh, I also have suffered from an Asian small wrist syndrome right yeah. so <laughs> curse and a blessing um, <laughs> You kind of psychologically tell yourself it's okay, you know, you can yeah. wear bigger watches. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm sure all of you have gone through that phase yeah. before, and yeah. some of you have successfully uh, surmounted that pinnacle. Um, so, <laughs> I, I, I then went to try the. Actually, I, I had tried this before, and back then, a bit of a snob, like, you know, it's like a quartz watch, right? So, you're doing a little mechanical thing, yeah. and it's like. So, this is the uh, Grand Seiko GMT, and I'm like, I always remember when I put it on my wrist it fit and it fit like like a glove like a glove <laughs> and I put it down and said nope it's quartz not gonna get it I already have a <laughs> snowflake I'm not not looking at another, another Grand Seiko but Seco. it's a Grand Seiko right I mean mm. like you said right they have to be mad to even yeah. consider putting a quartz on it and charging, then, then charging again, the current prices right? then again like people that don't know it will be like oh it's a regular quartz yeah, but if you know it yeah, yeah, the, the technology yeah, right, the NIAF and the everything NIAF, yeah, yeah. Right, the amount of uh, the accuracy that yeah. this this what's the accuracy like plus two per, plus two minus per year, per year. Right? Per year. this one's per month I think this one mm. if I'm not mistaken oh, plus it's two per plus, month. Plus, okay. plus two minus two per month if I remember right. correctly right. that's just insane accuracy yeah. Yeah. Right. a lot of people don't realise that even your standard quartz watches aren't accurate yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 unless of course you're constantly letting your phone correct it um, which yeah, is yeah, also yeah. something else altogether um, I've had others, other watches come and go um uh, as well, I had a. I like the G Shock Metal Square. I actually had it, oh. but man, that one yeah, I yeah, just yeah. cannot wear. You it's, know? it's huge, man. It's huge. It's, I, it really overhangs. That was my test, you know, where and yeah. I think that's what you had it to you. You you overcame it right for me. I, was like, I tried yeah, for a while, yeah, and I'm like, you know what? I've just had to sell it. I sold it at a loss, but I was like, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna wear it. Yeah. It's just too yeah, big. It's huge. I, I I loved it though, but you know, so didn't didn't work. Uh, met the guys um, at Nodus when they came over to Malaysia, yeah. and. Uh, uh, credit to uh, Marshall from the Matic. He's a really good salesperson, so he <laughs> convinced me that a 43 mm watch would work. Of course, a 48 mm luck to luck as well. He, he yeah. convinced me that Avalon would work. I was like, I actually went to see the sample unit as well. It's like, I think this might work. <laughs> so um, I got that. Uh, I'm glad it's now. I did sell it in the end. I'm glad it found an owner that really loved it. Um, so I moved it on. But I really like the fact that I got to know 
people behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was always keeping an eye out for whatever interesting thing might come along. And when I saw hints that they were going to come up with that, I just messaged them on Instagram and said, um, when is this going on sale? And they were kind enough to tell me, um, mm-hmm. actually, I can give you the link to to buy it already for the moment. Is this Lotus or Mapping? This is Lotus. Oh, really? okay. So that's the black DLC watch that you see here. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was also to kind of fill the gap that my Metal G was I bought the black ah, one. Right. I had the black IP one. Right, because you wanted, uh, I, I wanted I wanted that back. Right. I wanted a black uh, watch back. So I got yeah. this. Um, really well executed. Um, I like the fact that the dial is a lot more interesting than it appears because they actually put a 3D print on it as well. Yeah. There's actually a multi, yeah. multi There's texture. a sector dial right. as well. Yeah, the sector dial on it. Um, really put in a lot of effort in that. And they actually even DLC coated the pin sleeves. So, and uh, the... Um, Every pin that you see there is actually DLC coated as well. That's why the tips are all black. Right. So you don't actually see the, the So the whole pen Only the tips. So they oh, yeah, tips. the tips. Okay. Uh, so they, they had an eye for detail. I really, I met the met one of them uh, when he came over. I think it was uh, Wes that came over at the time. Had a good chat with him. Mm. And you could tell this is a... I think of indie brands a bit like the artists that perform in the bar scene if you were in the likes of mm. the Melbournes of the world, right? right? Or the, uh, indie. the indie bands yeah. that are there. And when they play, not cover music, they play their own music, it's yeah. really good. You just feel like buying their CD, right? Yeah. 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 I, they, they give me that sort of feeling and I really like that. So when it comes to micro brands, it's very important. I get Ming. a sense of that. Yeah. Ming. Ming. Speaking of Matic, did you see this? Oh yes, the, I did. The, the I've already change. messaged Marshall about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those, it yeah. It looks really good, this one. Yeah. 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 I was I was also very tempted and, yeah. and at a very affordable price. Yes, yes, yes. it's a very How much well, is it? This is I think well, a, thousand a thousand US dollars. dollars. Oh, really? For a diver like that, and there's a little movement in there as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, it's very yeah. well executed. So yeah. I've already messaged Marshall. Marshall's actually a collaborator on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why so, I brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when I saw it, I'm like, dude. That's amazing, you know, and that's like, but I've seen the Dietrich because he's been a supporter of Dietrich yeah. from Marshall Automatic, and uh, he had the previous one, the TC1, I think, and it was huge. So I did ask him um, what size was this one going to be, and he said, no, 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 this one he purposely for the manual, who's the founder of the brand. Mm. There's a market for the smaller size. Yeah. <laughs> after, after the 43 mm. Yeah, <laughs> yes, there's a market for it. So, Let's try and do that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm actually looking forward to that launch. I'm it's really very, nice. very nice. So uh, did you order one? Not just yet. I'm trying very, very hard to resist, but I know resistance is futile. So you heard it here first. It's probably going to be the next thing. Oh, in my nice. Head. <laughs> nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, of course, if I change my mind, I'm allowed to do it. I'll just redact this conversation. <laughs> so yes, that's. Um, that's the journey, but I, I just love the fact that watches are really a combination of, like I said, technology and art, mm-hmm. right? Um, I do a lot of photography. Um, at, uh, I have a small Instagram channel that I just put whatever photography I put on, and, and I try to make sure it's something that I'd be very happy to see up there as well. So, yeah. yep. um, and got into macro, a bit more macro photography um, as well. It's just a lot to appreciate, mm-hmm. and um, I just like the fact that you can almost just have it on you and people don't have to know and you're just enjoying it. Yeah. You can enjoy a drink at home and you yes, just take yeah. it out and all that. So it's a very dangerous hobby but I'm, I don't regret ever getting into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I think the reality of it is when you find people that know, you almost always strike a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like, yeah. like you mentioned, I think a secret club kind of thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And everybody's just equally passionate, equally interested and, uh-huh. and it's nice you know, to be in that sort of group. Yeah. But if you can just keep on watch, what would it be? <laughs> Man, oh. that's a tough one. So I've deliberated this a long time, right? And, uh-huh. and everybody who's into watches has asked me that question before. I'll be very honest. I will now admit um, I can never do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to chicken gun, out on it. Gun to the head. You know? Gun to the head. You tell me to, to pick one. I can, but it would kill me as well. Tell me will die. So, so which one would it be? If I had to keep one, it would have to be the El Primero. And think as well, yeah. that one, actually, to be very honest, made a few people converted into watch, uh, mm. watch enthusiasts as well. Mm. Because when they saw that, they never realised watches could be this interesting. Like, mm-hmm. that many colours on a dial, mm, yet correct. look... Um, 
interesting. And the movement, my and goodness. Movement, overlapping subdials. Yeah, overlapping subdials and all that. So, gun to my head, I'll put that, but a part of me will die. A part of me will literally die. The, the um, major part of you will die, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, technically, if the gun to head is meant to kill me, right? Technically, half of me is also dead, so. So, so, so yeah. Right. The, um, I know you, you talk about what, what got you into watches, what watches mean to you in, yeah. in several different ways. There's art, there's history and everything like yes. that. But if you summarize in in just one short sentence, right? Mm-hmm. When the first thing comes to mind when people ask you, what does watch mean to you? What would you say? That's a good question. One sentence. It is genuinely, uh, watches are really a confluence of technology and art. It's something yeah. that you really get to appreciate if you know it. Um, and take away all the marketing, take away all of that, right? At the core level, that's what it is. It's craftsmanship and technology coming into one's place. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. And what are you going to say to people mm-hmm. that would say that why do you spend so much money on watches, right? <laughs> why? That's, that's Apple watches that does more things, better stuff that are your phones that tells you your time and so on. And I think that's the questions that we all got constantly, right? Especially those that don't understand. It says like, why are you spending tons and thousands of dollars on watches? What are you going to say right. to those people? Well, I think you kind of have to have a passion or interest in something, right? So some people, like in the old days, you collect stamps, for example. Mm-hmm. Some people love the cars. Mm-hmm. Some people love the even collecting art, right? This is the one piece of functional, uh, a functional accessory that may even outlast you. Some of these can actually even outlast yeah, you, right? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Most the, yeah. If you if you treat it well, you maintain it. It's really cool that the thing will stop and like. Months later, even if you leave it in a drawer, you just have to wind it and it comes back alive, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's some magic to that, there's a charm yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, and who doesn't like something to wear something nice? You know, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just a bit it's, of all yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's almost like an extension of you in a way, right? Because yeah. Yeah, yeah. when you move it, it, it moves, right? Yes, mm-hmm. correct, correct, correct. There yeah. is that sentimental value that you Oh yeah, sentimentality is, a, yeah. is actually a very challenging idea as well when it comes to... But I know some people who are very disciplined, like one in, one out, right? Oh, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> I respect them again for being able to do that, but I find that... I've never heard so yeah, I, I'm sure it's... As the, it gets worse when you type a sentimental yes. reason yeah. to it. Yeah. Like yeah. The, if there was a landmark moment and yeah. you remember yeah. why you bought yeah. that, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know how to sell it after that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never sold a single watch. Here's <laughs> <laughs> the thing, because like right. for me, it's like if if, if it went through part of like any any trip that you make to or any yeah. travel or any occasion, it's right. like. There's no way I can party, especially if you tied it to a specific milestone. Yes, right. yes. This, this is when I got my promotion here. Yeah, this is when correct, I got that. Like, there's no way. Yes, there's, there's, no way, right. there's no way. Then the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is, right? Yeah. When uh, it's time to pass this down, yeah. would you pass this down to your kid yeah. that is not interested in watches? Or would you pass it down to someone else that is interested uh, in watches? Uh, so, I would not pass... Actually, the truth be told, I, I'm sorry kids, if you hear this 20 years from now, <laughs> I don't think they will inherit any of the higher tier pieces. Oh. Um, I'll actually give them the the watches that... I mean, I'll, I have a daughter, I don't think they'll, she'll wear any of this, it's probably too big, or I don't know. The normals? Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. Um, maybe she'll get lucky. Yeah. Know, <laughs> honest, right? uh, for my son, it'll probably just be a Baltic. Because for me, it's like, you kind of need to appreciate it to inherit it if mm. not I might as well pass it or if the time comes I have to let it go right give it let it go to people who genuinely appreciate it for yeah. what it is um, yeah uh, but yeah. yeah but if they're into watches then by all means you will yeah right? if, by, if yeah. my watches all by all means they will but only if they're responsible with it because if I start <laughs> seeing uh, huge ass dents on it um, I might just disown them <laughs> well <laughs> there's, a school, there's, there's a school of thought that says you know every dent tells a story right? that is yeah. true and I've done my fair dent on all my watches as well but I guess it's a case of being responsible yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, if they're into watches by all means, if I still have the collection at the time and I'm still very much into it, mm-hmm. I'm more than happy to hand it down. But if they're not, they'll inherit the cheaper ones. Uh, <laughs> but again, sentimentality. So, because uh, the, uh, the Baltic was what I had on me when my son was born. Mm-hmm. Ah, so, 
it's just a sentimental reason why I would pass that on. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Rene had your speed master. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Would you yeah. timing your perfection? <laughs> 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 I think that's that's the same for me as well. I always say that if 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 my kid is not interested in watches, no way in hell you're gonna get my watches. <laughs> right? If if I found out that you sold any of my watches that I passed to you, yeah. I will haunt you. That's for sure, man. Anything I pass down, it's for you to appreciate yeah. and, and for you to keep and pass down to the next generation. Yeah. Right, so that's the one of the dream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see when the time comes. Yeah. yeah. It's a journey. So I reckon the, the thing is, even my taste has changed over time. So mm. it's, it's, a, it's yeah. an interesting thing. I never used to feel very sensitive about proportions. Mm. Um, that's very true. Uh, guilty, guilty thing because I, I do do consulting, right? So I can't help but think and analyze. I think mm. if I show you guys the sort of stuff I've done, I actually have got a chart that does compares very well known watches on proportions as well. So I could almost tell you <laughs> just on the numbers whether the proportions look okay or not. That's right, the, right. Yeah, right. that's the level of which I've gone. So there's a science behind your madness. There's a, there's a sign. I've created the science behind my madness, so I've justified my madness yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have any regrets in purchasing any of your watches? Uh, more a case of timing. So the uh -huh. the the, the, snow, the snowflake. Mm. I wish I bought it in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, that's one. But uh, that's just totally based on price. That's but hindsight is twenty twenty Yeah, hindsight is yeah. twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, I would say that uh, I would also preferably not have bought the normals the way I did because it was more like you went out there to get it right. So mm. I, I I prefer <laughs> the idea of linking it to something. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Every watch that I've linked to something, I actually find it incredibly difficult to sell. Yeah. But any one that I didn't, it actually the idea of selling is actually easier. Mm. Yeah. So that for me is what it is. Uh, but anything that you see right now and you're asking whether I will sell any of this, it's going to be really hard. Um, mm. Anything that goes out, I think, like you uh, mentioned right now. So I want you to sell yourself. I was going to ask you about. <laughs> I was going to ask you about the snowflake, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that came. I came closest to selling, but. Uh, uh, I, I'm now on the fence now, but I just love the technology. Mm, you know, yeah. actually, I kind of wish they made it a little bit smaller, the course, exact same watch, a little yeah. bit smaller, mm. and yeah. I'll buy it in a heartbeat if yeah. the price isn't double. Sky fix, sky fix. <laughs> no, but I prefer this. Uh, I'll tell you why. I, okay. I personally prefer this over the sky fix. Well, sky fix is beautiful, by the way. I like this because it it is everything in the name, mm. in what how they made it, mm. and it's everything Grand Seiko is because you see even the name Snowflake, right? It's not just the dial, it's the fact that they made this watch in titanium. Yep. It's really light mm. on the wrist. So that is the same connotation when you say the word a snowflake. A snowflake on your hand is also very light. Um, and it's uh, the one that they used to showcase spring drive. So for me, yeah. yeah. So like the OG. The OG, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So what, what is the end goal for you, right? What, what, what is enough? <laughs> And where do you see yourself in your, your watch journey in the next like five ten years? I actually am actively looking at the micro brand scene because I like to support the, mm. the guys trying very hard to succeed in this, right? Mm. So, uh, especially those who haven't quite made it yet. So if I find a really a lot of interesting pieces there, in a way I can also justify the slightly lower prices than yeah, the yeah. luxury boys do. Uh, that way my wife won't kill me so quickly. Um, <laughs> so that's the space that I'm gravitating towards mm -hmm. um, there is a part of me I've never pursued pre-owned and vintage before mm -hmm. there is a part of me that has an eye on a JLC watch that's still current I'm hoping that years down the road mm -hmm. it becomes vintage and I might pursue it then mm -hmm. uh, that's an idea um, which JLC is that? Uh, it's a memo box oh it's a memo oh, box it's a memo box okay. yeah I really like the which idea which memo box? The one that just recently came out, the blue one. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that yeah. one's in the yeah, one. That's, So I thought, give it like 10 years and then I'll, I'll chase it after that, right? Give, you don't have any bit. watch with an alarm complication. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll know. wake you up in the morning. I know. <laughs> I know. You leave it on your wrist and you sleep all night and it just buzzes on your wrist, yeah, right? Yeah. That's a lovely idea. <laughs> so that that's where I think I'll go. Um, but I'm not actively looking to buy at the moment already. Um, I'm looking to support um, some good micro brands, mm. um, but in terms of the top tier, mm. pretty much, I'm happy I think, where I am. Yeah, I think you're lacking some some diving bezels, you know. 
<laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. true. That's why I've got the Baltic, and that's why the Dietrich's coming. Yeah, the Dietrich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. lagging a perpetual calendar. <laughs> Everyone's lagging a perpetual yeah, calendar. Yeah, everyone. Is, uh, uh, if you don't mind, I, I'd like you to get the uh, Hybris Mechanica, and, and then uh, I'll just loan it for you for a day. That will be a happy man. I'll die a happy man. I'll be a for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's probably gone, right? I'm pretty sure it's gone, right? Now. Is it a piece unique, though? It's 10 pieces. Oh, 10 pieces. Yeah, right, right, right. 10 pieces worldwide. 1. 1.6, 1.3 million. Uh, 1. 6, 1. 6. 1. 1.6, 1.6. 1.6 million. 1.6 million years. But yeah, it's crazy. It's a marvel, man. Okay. How yeah, to build nice. that. Yeah. I, don't <laughs> to, I don't even want to think of what the resale price is going to be. Yeah. Right, that's crazy. I think the most amazing thing about that wasn't just the fact that GLC is the watchmaker's watchmaker. So the complications are yeah. going to be amazing. But the fact that there's this pin that connects the main watch to, <laughs> to the back every night at midnight to push the other mechanism. Mm. That's actually how the other mechanism works. It's I'm like, wow. so I, I, I'm like, I feel like that's the sort of watch where you sit in the drawing room, you have a cigar, you put it in a glass case and it's okay if it's not on the wrist, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can do whatever you want with it, right? Yeah. yeah. Atmos, is, wall, right? Atmos is a more realistic goal. You know? Actually, that's true. I still have in mind to one day get that if... Uh, What's that, sorry? The, Atmos. The, uh, the Atmos, the clock. Um, clock. Yeah, I, I did, that did cross my mind uh-huh. uh, before. Uh, I haven't completely ruled it out yet. <laughs> yeah, so at least that one won't fight for wrist time. Mm. <laughs> All right, I think let's probably wrap up in the last few questions. Yeah. Um, what advice would you have, to, I mean, can you give to someone that wants to get into the watch scene? Well, first of all, f- speak to friends who are into the watch scene first, mm. but because uh, it's a slippery slope, right? So. <laughs> I categorize people who are into wants to get a watch into two kinds. Mm. So if they are not really into watches and they just want to get one Status watch, or, uh, or, no, okay. or it's just like I just want to get one watch mm. and I really don't want to get into the whole hobby sort of thing. Right. Mm. I would actually just check on the budget, but if they can, but of course now times have changed. I would just tell them get something like a Rolex and be happy with it. You, you, I can actually see people having that one watch and be done with it. Yeah. But if you're really into exploring, um, then it would be more a case of getting a, maybe a simple diver from a Seiko. Like a Seiko mm. 5 would be a great way to start. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, or a field watch from Hamilton. You know, it's start where you can afford it mm-hmm. um, and pick one that speaks to you. You know, the watch really, from a design perspective, must speak to you. Don't, don't let the marketing tell you what to wear. You need to look at it, see it on the wrist, and actually feel good. It, it's got to be that. And if it does, that's the connection you have with your watch. And that's the start of the journey that you want to have. Yeah. Um, that would be the advice mm. I give. Yeah. That, that, that is a very interesting point, right? Because when you're talking about not letting what marketing uh, influence you, right? Mm. Which is what, um, at least my point of view, and what I think what we talk about in the past few episodes as well, mm. um, a lot of people right now are getting into watches because um, it's sort of like, uh, I don't know call it, the hype, yeah. what yeah. you call yeah. it, right? Yeah. People are always like, they see this, they, they saw a guy friend that has a sub, they want a sub as well. Mm. <laughs> they don't even know <laughs> what mechanical watches in or what, but they just want a sub because mm. it's a Rolex and it's an iconic. And they will uh, complain if it stops if they don't use it. Yes, <laughs> things like that, right. All right, well, and, and it's getting more and more prominent yeah. right right yeah. now. And that's why, hence all the, the hike in Rolex prices and yes, so on. And um, Tudor, it's coming up to be the next one from yes, what I can looks, see. Looks like it as well. And what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's like destroying the, 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 the oh. for people like watch enthusiasts like us? Or like so I have a word of warning, James. You yeah. sure really want me to go there? Yeah. <laughs> That's why we are this special for oh, right. yeah, Let's do it. Yeah. How does it make it more of an exclusive club if you know? Right, more uh, about for me, that's why I categorize it in two different groups. Mm. If you're just getting a watch for the status, for the mm. fact that you want to get one watch, yeah, by all means, get all the hype watches. Mm. You, know, um, you can afford it, buy it. Mm-hmm. I want to encourage people to be more like the watch community at large, uh, the people that we are like, you know, mm. really enjoying it for what it is. And I get them, ease them in a bit more, mm. uh, a bit more into it. Um, I don't like the fact that watches are so hyped. Um, mm. Mm. I don't like the fact that you, even if you had the money, um, and that's the one you want, you won't even be able, yeah. aren't even able to get it. And that's wrong because yep. it's not even a exclusive club this is a brand <laughs> that makes a million watches a year yep. and for you to feel that sort of experience isn't what 
the brand actually wants either. And mm. I feel unless something self-corrects over time, it's just going to be worse for the rest of us. Yeah. Um, especially those who really enjoy it, right? They really like it for what, it, what you do. Mm. Uh, that would be the uh, bad cycle for us. So I'm actually, a part of me is hoping that it will self-correct mm. over mm-hmm. time. But by all intents and purposes, it doesn't look like it's going to be. It looks like it's getting worse. Like, yeah. It looks like it's going to get worse. But yeah. I, I thought that's why the, the decision for Patek to discontinue the Nautilus was not a bad idea. Yeah, the, so the blue dial. Actually, replace yeah. with green one. Yeah, we have to replace <laughs> with the green one. But they call it the final one as well. <laughs> so. <laughs> Actually, watch companies make very interesting business yep. cases as well when you look at what they do, right? Absolutely. And I actually think that if they are really, really aware, mm. uh, it's something that you can kind of understand why they're doing what they're doing. Yep. So if they have a connection to the watch community, and one big brand that I know really, really does is actually Omega because mm. they, they work with their community groups to mm. come up with mm. the Speedy Tuesdays, you know, and yep. all that, right? The community interacts with you, they propagate the brand as well. Yep. Um, there are some that are a bit further removed and that's the likes of the Rolexes and of the world, right? They're a bit more removed but they don't really need it either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to the question about Patek doing that, I think they had to because mm. um, they are a family-owned brand. Mm. They want to preserve the exclusivity. They don't really, they acknowledge they don't really like the hype going on about it yep. anymore. So they just take it off the market so that it doesn't create that in their boutiques. Mm. But I'm pretty sure in a year or two you'll come back yeah. uh, in a different form. But I also read like the, you know, the, the, the reason why they did that and I thought that it was quite bold of them to do that because I mean, it's as e- they can continue producing it and, yes. and it's, it's like hot commodity, right? Yes, but right. I, I read like the reason why they removed it is because it's also kind of protecting the brand. Uh. Yes, yes, Nautilus yes, yes. is not Patek. Patek has so many different... You are but it's right. like, kind of like Nautilus is Patek, yeah. which is not mm-hmm. really the case. Yeah, right. yeah. I think that was the, the trap that uh, Audemars fell into as yeah. well because everyone kind of Royal. thinks of them as the Royal Oak yeah. company. <laughs> Royal and Offshores and that's all there is. And yeah. I think they tried the 1159. It was bold. Mm. Fell a bit flat. Um, but in the, in the first launch, I think they've improved <laughs> it in the current iteration already. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, if you really look at it, even for an AP, for all the dissing that the watch community does give to them, right? Uh, shout out to people like Horological Dictionary who just never lets up with their memes. <laughs> the watches sell out, so who are yeah. we to say, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah. market for it, so <laughs> maybe we're just not the, the market they're talking <laughs> <laughs> Or rather, we're too sour to <laughs> even. <laughs> Could be. Hey, so, so if you, I think we talked about this in like two episodes ago, mm. right? Um, yes, as much as we can, we, won't, we hope that things get better for people who generally want to buy it, buy it. Yeah. And like, it was just, you're not being restricted of not being able to buy it, right? Not even, you can't even like guarantee yourself you'll get it in five years. Yeah. That's literally, you, you go in, you express your interest, you want to buy it. Yes. And mm-hmm. 10 years later, you might not even get a watch, yes, right? Sir. But do you see a way, or can you envision a way that this can be resolved? Uh, yes, yeah. I can. I've actually given my opinion on this. I actually wrote to Interesting, I wrote to uh, Ariel Adams of uh, Block to Watch with a long, <laughs> long form response when mm. he wrote about this as mm. well. I believe you actually have to, Rolex has to do something on their part. Mm. Um, and where it starts is by having an owner database. Mm. And that's the age of data right now, right? Mm. So you just want to know where who your owners are. You could actually do it by offering them a longer get a warranty or mm. something like that, mm. right? Service warranty. And the whole point is to get a registry of who your owners are. And I know there are privacy laws in the world and all yep. that, but the whole point is you want to see where the flipping is happening mm-hmm. in the wrong places, right? Mm-hmm. If people are owning it and they're flipping it after a while, that's, that's fine. fine. But if there are a few individuals that are buying 10 subs and it just disappears off the market, right? That's mm-hmm. where you stop it. Yep. Yeah. So I feel that because a company as huge as Rolex is not bothered to do something like that, it's very sad because... Mm it allows you to know your customer a bit more. Yep. And at the end of the day, as much as the prices going up is good for them, they're not the one pocketing the money either. Yep. So it's very odd for me that they, are not, they don't seem to be proactively trying to solve this. Mm. Uh, just so that the people that really want it for what they are mm. can continue yep. to buy it. And I think the reality is no one's really complaining about the retail prices either. Yeah. So I feel that it's more <laughs> a case about recognizing but, but you, 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 you mentioned that they don't, um, in a way, monetary-wise, they don't 
profit from it. They don't pocket anything from it. But I think what they get from it, it's the the idea of the brand, right? The because image. the more unattainable it is, yeah, it creates that psychological um, correct. hype. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think correct. that's where they're they're harping correct. on, correct. Uh, correct. 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 But to me, I I personally want. To buy some Lux model, yeah. but I can't get it as well. And, so, but th- that's why yeah. it's also creating all these unsavory uh, practices, right? Mm. Where, where you, in order to get the one that you want, you have to buy yeah. watches that you don't want, which is. <laughs> <laughs> to to me that it's I mean to me that that it's it's not nice, but I somewhat still think it's a um, little bit acceptable. The one that I think is absolutely unacceptable is where the watch doesn't even go into the shelf, right? It's under table, yeah, shady yeah. stuff happening, mm. right? Yeah. I'm a deal. I'm a eight. I'm a dealer there. I got ten subs. I sell it to the eight, uh, an eighty. I mean, a, a grey market Absolutely. dealer, yeah. and then I pocket the profits mm-hmm. between them. Right. Yeah. That's not a fair chance, right? Yeah. If you put it up there, a fair chance, yeah. the bigger buyer gets the bigger chance. I think that it's, in a way, mm-hmm. it's a system like, It's it's mm-hmm. better than yeah, not not rigging it or something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a it's a never ending conversation now. Right? Right. we can constantly talk yeah. about. And to be frank, to the point where you said that no one's complaining about the retail price, I think that's because no one can buy it at the retail price. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing. I mean, I, like you I know. know, it's true. It's true. I I I like an, an analogy like this, and this is a conversation I've had mm. before with a close friend of mine as well. So Rolex is very much in this universe of watches, mm. right? Rolex is like the sun. Yeah. You cannot run away from it. They are the what powers nature, the force of nature <laughs> around it, right? Mm. And you have to you give due respect for it, but. When the when global warming is happening, it, people have to do something about it as well. So, I just fear that if nothing is done to curtail the unsavory practices, that for all intents and purposes, if I'm the brand, right, I don't want my brand associated with unsavory practices. I don't mind it being what the mm-hmm. it's called a Veblen good, right? The, mm-hmm. Where it's a supply and demand thing. The the less yep. you have, the more expensive it is, and all that stuff. But that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's exactly the, the space that the likes of Patek, uh, AP and all that operate. But if you are not really in that market and you are not gaining, you're gaining the sales, yes, but you're actually also damaging your the, all the effort you're putting in to you being a brand that people should aspire to. Because right now, the aspiration is fake already. It's not yeah. even something you can get anymore. So for yeah, all but, that, yeah. a crown is every achievement for every achievement sort of thing, right? I can't even get it anymore. So yeah. why are you <laughs> telling me that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if they were pocketing the higher premium, so that's exactly what Patek did, right? They raised their prices mm. uh, and then they pocketed it, right? Then that cools the market a little bit and they are pocketing it. But right now, because there is no line back to them anyway, right? Actually, they are not gaining from this. Yep. Yeah. They have done amazing work marketing the brand for decades. They are one of the best in the world at it, right? And they should reap the benefits of it. But right now, the people that have submitted to the idea that this brand is really what it is, and they make awesome products for that matter, Mm. can't get it. And people who just pay more to third-party dealers, Mm. doesn't even go back to the brand to market even more or anything like that, Mm. is taking all the money and it's... Being a, it's a very unhealthy thing. But yeah. So I reckon, I do hope that Rolex at some point puts a measure, a cooling measure of some mm. sort, mm. rather than just a supply and demand thing. Mm. It's a cooling measure. Don't change your supply. So mm. some people say, you know, why don't Rolex just build mm. more watches? Right? I actually don't think they should. They should just mm. produce what they produce. That's fine. It's really doing something to deter people from profiteering mm-hmm. yep. at the point of it leaving the AD. Yep. Mm. Mm. That's all. Everything else that happens after the AD is fine. You know, yeah. that's the market doing yeah. this thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's the there's a rule in um I think London. Yeah. When you buy a Rolex, you have to keep the warranty card with them for a year. Right. Right. So that's something that they did. <laughs> so at least you you cannot flip it immediately. Mm. And if you flip it, you have to flip it one year later. I think mm. something like that. Mm. Mm. M- may may, help, may yeah. deter a little yeah. bit, yeah. 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 yeah, it will still happen, but at least you, <laughs> you, you at least reduce the capital yeah. of the grey dealers. Yeah, right? They can't buy and sell and buy it again, right? Yeah. They can't flip it multiple times within that time frame. Yeah. Which it's at least they're doing something. Yes. Right. Yes. And being that being said, if they're doing something, hopefully the Asian market can do something as well. Yeah. And I only agree. time will tell. Only yeah. time will tell. Yep. Alright, uh, I think that's a good way to end it. <laughs> yeah. time tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. we ended up having a Rolex discussion. <laughs> yeah, it's very dangerous as Renate said. Yeah. Uh, he calls me a Rolex hater, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. <laughs> yeah.
All right, then. All right. Uh, it's been an awesome night having you over, Woody, and a uh, pleasure having you um, letting us know between your watch journey and talking about all of your watches. And um, any final words to the audience? I think if just enjoy the, the hobby, um, enjoy it responsibly at the end of the day, right? <laughs> so just like the drinks that some people have, some of you don't, but it's a hobby that you can get yourself really into, but enjoy the journey. It's, there's a journey to be had as well. It's not just about ownership. Yeah. Mm. And on that note, thank you very much. It's been right. my pleasure Cheers. as well. Thanks, right. guys. Thank you. Cheers.